In this video, the Serenity Dagger Blade is going to start looking like a dagger blade. We're going to grind in the blade bevels, make it nice and pointy, and have some fun stabbing stuff. In the last episode, I used my brand new milling machine to cut a fuller, otherwise known as a blood groove, on both sides of the dagger, and then I polished the fuller to a nice shiny finish. I already profiled most of the blade, but I left a little bit at the tip alone. I left it alone because there was a nub I made on the tip of the blade and on the tip of the tang, so I could line my blade up on the milling machine, flip it over, and line it up easily for milling in the fuller. Now that the fuller's in, I can go ahead and grind off that nub and finish profiling that little bit of the tip left. I shaped the tip and got rid of that, uh, that little measuring nub that we had on there. The next thing I want to do is give myself some scribe lines because I'm about to hog off some material and actually grind in the blade bevels. So I'm going to use my height gauge. I'm just going to come in here, measure the thickness of the blade, and then uh, find the center and then offset a little bit to leave myself some offset lines to grind to. The blade's coming in at about 280 thousandths. So we can go to half of that, 140. So the height gauge should be set to the middle of the blade. I don't want to grind all the way down to zero. I want to leave the edge, I think, about 40 thousandths of an inch. I'll see how 40 thousandths looks. So if we move it up 20 thousandths, that'll give us a 40 thousandths offset. When I scribe a line on this side, flip it over and uh, do it on the other side. Just make a little spot there and then do another little spot in the same spot. If I was making a dagger that was a lot wider than this, then maybe I would want the edge a little thicker to make a little more convex. But this is actually a very narrow dagger that tapers a lot. So if you think about it, these uh, grinds, the grinds on this dagger are gonna be very aggressive. Since it's such a thick, narrow dagger, the grind is gonna be more like this. If the dagger was wider, then the grind would be more flat, and that's when I might wanna leave the edge thicker. But since the edge is gonna be a pretty aggressive angle, there'll be a lot of material supporting the edge behind it, so I can leave the edge a little bit thinner than if the blade was wider and thinner. I've got quite a bit of material to remove, so I'm using a nice, aggressive 36 grit belt. I also start out at the very corners of the dagger blade. I tip the dagger on way more of an angle than my final bevels will be, and I knock the corners off first. And then as I start to form a bevel, I slowly flatten out the angle of the grind and bring that grind closer and closer to the fuller of the blade. I hope I made my fuller the right depth because if I made it too deep, the fuller is gonna go all the way down to the tip. If I made the fuller too shallow, then it's not gonna go down the blade very far. How far down the blade the fuller goes is based off of how much distal taper I grind into the blade. So that's the taper of the blade thickness from the ricasso to the tip. And it's also based on how deep the fuller is. So I need the distal taper and the depth of the fuller to work together to get that fuller to stop where I want it to, about three inches from the tip of the blade. I've already done a big portion of the heavy grinding. Uh, I noticed the uh, water and stuff is getting on the fuller, giving some kind of light oxidation. So I wanted to come over here and put a little WD-40 on it. Also, time for a coffee break. Oh, that's good. Kind of hard to get to, but really good.
If you're interested in how I went from a homeschooled kid making my first knife at 14 years old to making the knives and swords I'm making today, then subscribe to my newsletter where we talk about just that. The link's in the description. So I just finished these bevels out to 120 grit with a nice thick backered ceramic belt here. And I wanted to show something that I discovered. Sometimes it can be hard to decide on which belts you wanna buy. Like you can get a name brand belt, you can get an off brand belt that's almost as good, that's like half the price or even cheaper sometimes. And here's one case when you might want a really high quality name brand belt. This is a Norton Blaze belt. And when you're doing really delicate grinding, you want that belt to sit as flat against the uh, platen as it possibly can. This one doesn't sit perfectly flat. If you look really close right here, the middle puckers out just a little bit. It's not too bad though. The reason you want it to sit flat and you don't want it to pucker out is because when you come in here to do your grinding, you want the, the grinding belt to hit evenly across your blade. When the middle puckers out, if you're doing delicate grinding, that means the middle of the belt's gonna be hitting right here on the blade first, and it won't be hitting evenly across. And then as you apply pressure, there's gonna be a tiny bit more pressure in the middle than there are on the outside edges. So you want that belt to sit as flat as possible so when you're grinding, it makes your job as easy as possible when you're doing really delicate stuff. Now, if this was a big old buoy with big, wide, like two inch bevels, no problem at all. That belt's puckering out. You just slam it across there and do your sanding. But this being kind of a delicate grind with really narrow bevels, I'm using very light pressure and gently grinding. You want the belt as flat as possible so you don't end up dishing out places and grinding places you don't want to. Now, in contrast to that belt, we have an off-brand equivalent of that exact same belt. So this one still has a beautifully thick backer on it. It's got ceramic grain. I've got it in here at about the same tension, but this one you can see the pucker sticks out more than that, uh, that Norton Blaze belt. This belt seems to last about as long as the Norton Blaze. Every other aspect of it seems to be on par, but that little bit of pucker right there makes delicate grinding just a little bit more challenging. Now that I'm pretty much done with the bulk of the bevel grinding, I want to convex the edge next. To convex the edge, I'm gonna use the two x 72 with the slack belt, and that will give a little bit of a radius to the, uh, the edges as I grind them. I need to be careful to try to grind equal amounts off of both sides, and I need to make sure to not grind through my tape or I'll end up grinding into this nice clean looking fuller. Grinding the convex edges down to about five or 10 thousandths of an inch thick actually took quite a bit of time. If you think about it, this dagger has a lot of blade edge and I needed to grind everything evenly and consistently. The convex edge goes up the blade so far, you could almost call this a full convex grind instead of a flat grind with convex edges. Dad's over at the forge forging out his fourth journeyman knife right now, so that's what the noise is. On the dagger, I finished grinding it. Uh, pretty much just had a little bit of final grinding to do. Had to uh, get these plunges all ground in, and I've spent pretty much a whole day hand sanding the blade. I have one side of the blade up to 320 grit, and the other side at 600. I wanna get both sides up to 600, but before I do that, I need to get my maker's mark etched into the side that's 320 because I'll probably need to do a little bit of cleanup 320 sanding after my maker's mark is etched in. So I need to do that and then take up the rest of the blade to 600 grit. Because the fuller goes all the way through the Ricasso, there's nowhere to put my maker's mark on the Ricasso. So that kind of leaves me with basically like two options. I can put it on the blade going this way, like right here above the fuller, or I could put it uh, like on the side of the front spacer, like one of my two swords. I think in this case for the dagger though, I'm gonna stick it right here on the bevel of the blade, uh, going this way right above the fuller. The stencil is just transparent enough that I can see through it with enough light. And I've laid it out so it's about a 16th of an inch away from the fuller. Lined it up by eye. Now I'm adding a bunch of layers of tape. So I wanna give it some uh, rigidity because I'll be able to I'll need to lift it up and clean underneath it as I uh, do the electrochemical etching. The stencil basically has cutouts in it, allowing the, uh, the electrolyte and electricity 
to go anywhere those cutouts are. There's a fine mesh though that holds the little uh, dots in the center of the R and the O. Otherwise those dots wouldn't have anything to hold all that stuff together and they would just not be there. So the mesh is really cool because it holds all that together. I'm gonna also use a Variac controller here. This just controls the uh, voltage output. So I can control how much voltage we're giving it. And then just got a wire plugged into it and a little full wave bridge rectifier. This changes it from AC to DC power. And then I've got an electrode here, which is just a little piece of steel with a piece of felt on it. And then uh, the other cable gets hooked up to the knife blade itself. I need to soak this down with just the right amount of electrolyte to help the electricity uh, go through the stencil and cut out my maker's mark. I'm cleaning under the stencil with some acetone. I don't want anything to inhibit the maker's mark from etching nicely. If you have some Sharpie or something, a lot of times I'll, I'll lay out lines with the Sharpie and that can actually make it so it doesn't etch where the Sharpie is. Got about 25 volts. We can go ahead and start etching in this name. I'm gonna run it in one place for a few seconds and then kind of overlap and move it over and do the next section. I'm gonna go back and forward on this for a couple minutes and then I'll clean out underneath it, check the depth, and then uh, probably do a second or third cycle. To check underneath there again. I've already checked once and it was looking amazing. I think uh, I think I have been using way too much electrolyte recently. This is much drier this time. The mark looked like it was coming out real crispy. Yeah, yeah, I've been using too much electrolyte. I need to run it on the dry side. That looks good. It's looking real crisp. Just double checking to make sure before I take this off because you don't want to have to put it back on. Yep, we're calling that good. Next, I'm gonna rub some Neutralite over it. The Electrolyte can cause the blade to like rust really quickly, so you wanna get it neutralized. I can just let that brass black dry on there for a minute, sand the surface off, and we'll be able to see how the Maker's Mark looks finished up. And there's my finished Maker's Mark. It looks very nice. It's nice and deep. It came out very crispy and clean as well. It does look a little bit fuzzy around the edges, but that'll clean up more as I finish hand sanding the blade. And then by the time we etch it and everything, using less electrolyte definitely helped a lot because some of the marks I've been getting lately have been washed out uh, quite a bit in some areas. So I love the way this one came out. Now that my name's on the blade, I think it's time to take a little break and go stab a bunny and some other things. First on the chopping block, we have the bunny. Uh, <laughs> the bunny, the bunny, bunny, the bunny, 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 miss bunny, <laughs> the bunny. The bunny. <laughs> wow. Whoa, look at the foam inside pouring out. <laughs> Next up, we got Lego Thanos. He wanted to snap half the universe out of existence. Well, I'm gonna snap him in half with this dagger blade. Woohoo! Whoa, take that, Thanos. Yeah, right below the belt. <laughs> now, see if we can stab a ketchup bottle. This is totally Heinz brand, it's not generic off brand at all. Whoa, it went right in and right out. It was like, whoop, and then I, I felt it slide off. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Next up, we've got some diet soda. <laughs> We're gonna charge it with a Mento, supercharge it. Dad's gonna put it in there and I'm gonna try to capture it as quickly as I can. That was a fail. I had the lid on almost all the way and then it <laughs> and then it dropped. Quick. <laughs> 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 
Whoa! That is getting all over me. I am sticky. <laughs> oh, Josh, I'm gonna get all sticky. The Serenity Dagger, it will stab. I just finished profiling the tang, getting it uh, roughed in to where we want it on the finished knife. I still need to round some things over and everything, but the next thing I wanna do is actually work on the sides of the tang. I've got my file guide on the Ricasso, and I've got it lined up right where the guard is gonna fit up to the Ricasso. I'm gonna mill a little bit of material off the sides of the tang, and then we're gonna surface grind the rest of the tang. While we're here, I wanna show you how I got the file guide square with the blade. The entire blade is tapered, so I can't, couldn't just put a square on the, uh, the blade itself because it's got an angle to it. So I put the file guide on, eyeballed it, got it close, and then I've got a couple uh, pieces of metal here, nice flat pieces of metal. I can lay the blade on this piece of metal, and the end of the piece of metal is square. So then I just push the file guide up against the end of it and then line the point up with my height gauge over here. Once the point's lined up and I get the height gauge to the right height to where it's lined up with the point, I flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And if everything's square, that tip should come out in the same place on both sides. As long as your blade is, is uniform and symmetrical on each side, if your blade was out of whack, then it's gonna lead to compounding problems. So that's how I got the file guide on here, nice and square. I finished milling both sides of the tang. I made little tiny stair steps. This first cut here, I only took two and a half thousandths of an inch away because I don't want to take more material away from the thickness of the tang than I need to. Then I made another stair step here with another couple thousandths and then uh, another one there and another one there. In total, I only removed seven thousandths at the most right here on both sides of the tang. I also lightly dusted against the file guide. I put Sharpie on there so I could see when the mill bit started to uh, touch it. I'm gonna take this over to the grinder and grind these portions right here and I'm also going to round this portion of the tang a little bit. Now that I've grinded here and here and I rounded the top of this tang on both sides, I can go ahead and take the file guide off, pop this on the surface grinder, and get the rest of this tang uh, ground down to the right thickness. From here down, still is thicker than up here. I'm using my 1958 Coville surface grinder made in Bitten Harbor, Michigan. This thing weighs about 2,500 pounds. The tang is pretty much shaped and ready to go for the guard, front spacer, and handle. I won't finish out the blade anymore until pretty much the rest of the handle is all done. That way I don't have to worry about uh, scratching it or taking care of the completely finished blade and I can just focus on the handle, get it done, and then do the final sanding and etching of the blade. In the next video, we're gonna start working on the handle and do the first component, which is forging the guard and get it fitted up nice and tightly to the blade. I will see you in the next video. May the forge be with you. Bye-bye. The YouTube algorithm thinks you'll like this video, so let's see if it's right. I think you'll like this video, so let's see if I'm right.